Welcome back everyone. Over the past few videos, we've explored the page-based routing mechanism that Next.js offers. We have seen how to create a route for the root of our application, how to create nested routes, how to create dynamic routes, and also catch-all routes. But throughout those videos, we navigated to the different pages by entering the URL in the browser address bar, which of course is not how a regular user would navigate in our application. Typically, we would have a UI element like a link which the user can click to navigate to a different route or the user could also be navigated programmatically to a different route after an action has completed, for example. In this video, let's understand navigating to different routes using an element in the user interface. For our first example, let's try to navigate from the home page to the blog page. To perform client-side navigation, Next.js provides us with the link component. So in index.js, within the pages folder, at the top, import link from next slash link and then in the JSX, we can use this link component to navigate to any route in our application. And here's the syntax. First, we specify the link component. Within the link component, we add an anchor tag. The text between the anchor tags will be the display text, which is blog for our first example. Now the change here is that instead of specifying the href attribute on the anchor tag, we specify on the link tag. So href is equal to slash blog. Slash blog here represents the route that we want to navigate to. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we should see the blog text being rendered. This is a clickable element. When I click on it, we are navigated to slash blog, which is the blog page. Our client side navigation is successful. So import the link component and invoke it with an anchor tag and an href prop. Let's do this one more time to make sure we get this right. For example two, Let's navigate to the product page. So right after the first link, I'm going to add another. Link tag, anchor tag, the text is going to be products, and href is going to be slash product. This corresponds to our product folder and index.js. If we now go back to the home page, we should see the products link and when I click on the link, we see product one, two, and three, which corresponds to our product list component. Now it's also quite common to navigate back to the root of your application. So for example three, from this products page, let's add a link to go back to the home page. So for that, open index.js, which is inside the product folder, and at the top, import link from next slash link and within the JSX add the link component anchor tag the text is home and the href is going to be equal to just a forward slash. This represents the root of our application. If you now go back to the browser click on products we should be able to see the newly added link to go home. Click on that and we are navigated back. Our code works as expected. Now for our fourth example, let's understand how to navigate to dynamic routes. In our products page, we are currently listing three products. Let's convert them into a link which takes the user to the product details page. And if you remember, the details page route 
is slash product slash product ID. Product ID can be one, two, three, and so on. So back in our product list component, let's include a link in each of the heading tags. So link component, anchor tag, the text is product one, and href is equal to slash product slash one. And I'm going to repeat this for product two and three as well. If we now go back to the browser, all the products should be clickable. I click on product one. We are navigated to the details page. Go back, click on product two, and the same happens. You are able to successfully navigate to the dynamic route. Now, although this works fine, you might not always have the freedom to hard code a dynamic route like we see here. The product ID can be passed in as a prop to the component. We of course are not sending in the prop, but let's assume the prop does exist and let's assign a default value of 100 for use in our component. Now to navigate to this product ID, we simply have to use string interpolation for the href attribute. So I'm going to copy paste it and href use backticks where the product ID is the prop. So href is equal to curly braces backticks slash product slash product ID. Let's bind product ID to the text as well. If we now head back to the browser, we should see product 100 on click of which will take us to the details page of the same product. So our link component based client side navigation is working as expected. Now one prop I would like to highlight about the link component is the replace prop. On product three, I'm going to set the replace prop on the link tag. Now in the browser, let's observe the back button behavior. Click on products, click on product one and click back. Click on product two and click back. But when you click on product three and click back, we are brought to the home page instead of the product list page. So the replace prop will replace the current history state instead of adding a new URL to the stack. Something to keep in mind. All right, that is about the link component. Now it's very important to note here that the link component is used for client side routing, which means routing within your application. If you want to navigate to an external website, you should use the plain old HTML anchor tag. Also, you shouldn't be using a plain HTML anchor tag for client side routing as it would make a new server request and any client state you are maintaining will be erased. So to summarize the link component, import link from next slash link, include it in the component with an anchor tag for the text and an href for the route. In the next video, let's learn how to navigate programmatically to a route in our application. I'll see you in the next one.